Welcome back to the slice, folks. The Labor Cup just finished and it was awesome. This video is going to recap what happened and tell you why it was so sick. <laughs> Big news theslicetennis.com is now live. And you can go there and you can check out the articles that I'm writing. We're posting all of our videos there and we're gonna be doing lots of different cool stuff like style watch for all the clothes that comes out uh, at the different points during the season by Nike, Adidas, you know, all the other brands. And possibly in the future, we're gonna open it up to articles written by the fans. So if you think you're good at sports writing and you wanna start writing for tennis, you'll have the chance to write for us. So stay tuned for that and head to the slicetennis.com. So if you, like many people, are wondering what was the Laver Cup? This was the brainchild of Roger Federer who wanted to create a tournament that would bring the individual athletes of tennis together and form teams to compete for a cup. And it was, it's kind of an exhibition, doesn't count for ranking points, but it's to honor his legend, Rod Laver, who, who Roger Federer thinks is the greatest player of all time, even though everyone knows that Federer is really the greatest tennis player of all time. So it was Team Europe versus Team World. So Team Europe versus the rest of the world. And uh, they did that to kind of compensate for how much better Europe is than the rest of the world at tennis. To put it in perspective, there's only been one player who's not European to win a major since 2003, the last 13 years. And that was Juan Martin Del Potro, and he's not even there. He wasn't even at the tournament. So Team World was pretty much just Americans and Australians with the addition of my man, Dennis Shapovala from Canada in there. And Team Europe was stacked. They had... Five of their players were in the top 10, and only the one who wasn't, Thomas Burdich, uh, has been in the top 10 for like the last 10 years. So they were definitely the clear favorites. So Team World played, they were a lot younger, and they played like underdogs, and they just had a ton of fun. You know, Kyrgios, Sack, or Sack, Jack Sock, were, and Shapovalov, and all these guys, they were just dancing around there, having a great time on the sidelines when their buddies would compete. And it was just awesome to see the two teams with their, with their benches there just going at it and going hard because usually these guys are, you know, on their own. They have their own team. They travel around. They're competitors. But in this tournament, they were teammates, and it was amazing to see. Team World, or sorry, Team Europe, they were a little, little bit older. Federer, Nadal, Burdich, all these guys, a little bit older, Chilich. Um, but, you know, they obviously don't. They played a lot better. But the coolest thing was to see Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal on the same team. The two greatest tennis players of all time on the same team, 35 combined majors between them, having them on a doubles team on one side of the net. That's a little bit ridiculous, if you ask me. So, but Team World did well. They did stand up. King, uh, Nick Kyrgios led the way by beating, he beat, he beat Thomas Burdich, and that, so that gave him them more momentum. And then John Isner really stepped up and surprisingly beat Rafael Nadal. Don't know how he did that, because uh, Rafael Nadal just won the U.S. Open. Um, and then on the final day, it was Nick Kyrgios versus Roger Federer. And if Federer won that, then they won the tournament because it was the first per team to uh, 13 points. And there was one point for every match before Sunday and then three points for every match on Sunday. So Federer won in a really tight match, and it was amazing. It was just an amazing display of tennis the whole, the whole weekend. And I am sure that the Labor Cup is going to become a tradition now in men's tennis uh, every year. Next year, it's in Chicago. So I might have to go to that. You never know. I might have to go to that, see how much money we can make from the slice until then. But it's going to be in Chicago, and it's a great thing. You know, because there's kind of a lull after, in tournaments after the U.S. Open before the Asian swing starts. And sometimes the tennis world sleeps on the Asian swing. Obviously, the people in Asia don't. Um, but it's a nice tournament to fit right in there in that gap. And to me, it was just an amazing event. We saw all this talent packed into one, and it was just a little bit different dynamic with the teams instead of the individual performances. So... Tell me what you thought about the tournament. I thought it was sick. What did you think about the Laver Cup? So anyways, that was the slice on the Laver Cup. Thanks for watching, folks. This is the slice. This is where I do tennis reviews, commentary, and predictions. So keep it locked here. Subscribe down below, and your dreams will be fulfilled.